subscribe to Dr. Khalkar's classroom channel and press the bell icon to get latest updates. Hello everyone, I hope you are doing great. In my previous lecture video, I have discussed upon superconductors. In this lecture video, I will discuss upon unit number 6, in which we will discuss two topics. First is NDT, that is non-destructive testing, and second one is nanotechnology. So let's get started, first topic that is NDT. The content of this lecture video is as follows. First of all, I will discuss upon introduction to destructive testing and non-destructive testing. Followed by I will discuss about classification of NDT and I will give the comparison points between the destructive testing and non-destructive testing. First of all, let's discuss about destructive testing. Destructive testing is undertaken in order to understand a specimen's performance or material behavior. These procedures are carried out to test specimen's failure. Destructive testing can either follow specific standards or can be tailored to produce set service conditions. Destructive testing methods are commonly used for materials characterization, fabrication validation, failure investigation and can form a key part of engineering critical assessments which also involves non-destructive testing. In destructive testing, the sample under test is destroyed and cannot be used for any purpose after the test. Examples are tensile test, impact test, etc. These tests are performed on sample material out of the batch. These tests are used to find out mechanical properties like hardness, compressive strength, yield strength and tensile strength, etc. Destructive tests are carried out to specimen's failure in order to understand specimen's performance or material behavior under different loads. These tests are generally much easier to carry out, yield more information and are easier to interpret than non-destructive testing. Here is an example of frontal small overlap car crash test in which car gets crashed and cannot be used further. Destructive testing is most suitable and economic for objects which will be mass produced as the cost of destroying a small number of specimens is negligible. It is usually not economical to do destructive testing where only one or very few atoms are to be produced. For example, in case of a building, analysis and documenting the destructive failure mode is often accomplished using high-speed camera recording continuously moving loop until failure is detected. Detecting the failure can be accomplished using a sound detector or stretch gauze which produces a signal to trigger the high-speed camera. These high-speed cameras have advanced recording modes to capture almost any type of destructive failure. After the failure, the high-speed camera will stop recording. The captured images can be played back in slow motion, showing precisely what happens before, during and after the destructive event, image by image. Now let's see a few examples of destructive testing. Aggressive environment testing. This includes fracture and fatigue testing in sore H2S, sweet CO2 and other corrosion environments at a range of temperatures and pressures. These tests allow industry to assess the impact of these conditions on materials and performance. Next is corrosion testing. This covers non-toxic, small-scale, Aqueous corrosion testing in a variety of different environments, including fresh and seawater. Next is fracture and mechanical testing. This includes different types of destructive testing methods such as tension tests, bend tests, Sharpie impact test, pilini drop weight testing, pill test, crush testing, pressure and fracture testing, as well as the testing of metals, fracture and mechanical tests can be carried out on different materials such as welded polymers including plastic pipes. Next is fatigue testing. Performed in air or seawater environments, 
These tests are used to test parent materials and the endurance of welded joints under constant or variable amplitude loading. This destructive testing method can be used for fatty crack growth testing of welds, base metals and heat affected zones. Next is heterogen testing. This type of testing covers materials that have a risk of corrosion from exposure to hydrogen. This test can be carried out at a variety of different temperatures and strain rates. Next is residual stress measurement. Residual stresses are those that remain in a solid material after the original causes of any stresses have been removed. This can be intentional such as with the scratch resistant glass on smartphones, unintentional which can lead to premature failure of a structure. Measurement of residual stresses allows for designers and engineers to determine factors like near surface and through thickness residual stress distribution which can be used in engineering critical assessments. Now let's see what is non-destructive testing. Non-destructive testing that is NDT is the process of inspecting, testing or evaluating materials, components or assemblies for discontinuities or differences in characteristics without destroying the function ability or serviceability of the material. When the inspection or test is completed, the part can be still used. In contrast to NDT, other tests are destructive in nature and are therefore done on a limited number of samples rather than on the materials, components or assemblies actually being put into service. These destructive tests are often used to determine the physical properties of materials such as impact resistance, ductility, yield and ultimate tensile strength, fracture toughness and fatigue strength, but discontinuities and differences in material characteristics are more effectively found by NDT. Today, modern non-destructive tests are used in manufacturing, fabrication and in-service inspections to ensure product integrity and reliability to control manufacturing processes, lower production cost and to maintain a uniform quality level. During construction, NDT is used to ensure the quality of materials and joining processes during the fabrication and erection phases and in service NDT inspections are used to ensure that the products in use continue to have the integrity necessary to ensure their usefulness and the safety of the public. It should be noted that while a medical field uses many of the same processes the term non-destructive testing is generally not used to describe medical applications. Now let's see the list of few NDT tests. Test method names after refer to the type of penetrating medium or the equipment used to perform that test. Current NDT methods are acoustic emission testing, electromagnetic testing, laser testing methods, leak testing, magnetic flux leakage, liquid penetrant testing, magnetic particle testing, neutron radiographic testing, radiographic testing, thermal infrared testing, ultrasonic testing, vibration analysis and visual testings. Amongst all these test methods, we will study in detail acoustic emission test, radiographic testing, ultrasonic testing as per our SPPU FE Engineering Physics 2019 pattern syllabus. Now let's see the classification of NDT methods. Non-destructive testing is based on interrelation between a physical field or a substance and a tested object. Few types of NDT are discussed as below. So first of all, NDT method, then physics employed and what are the applications of that NDT methods. First is acoustic method. Application of mechanical load or rapid temperature or pressure change to the part being tested and analyzing its propagation can be done in physics employed for the acoustic test. Applications Flaws or irregularities inside the materials can be tested with the help of this method. Next is ultrasonic method. Echo sounding using ultrasounds are used in this method. Whereas detection of flaws or irregularities inside the materials measurement of thickness of metal sheets etc 
are the applications of this method. Next entity method is radiography testing, X-rays or gamma rays, in which exposing the materials under test to X-rays or gamma rays and taking impressions can be used. The application is detection of cracks, cavities, flaws, porosity of materials, etc. Next method is magnetic entity method in which magnetic field is applied to the materials and changes in magnetic characteristics of the ferromagnetic materials are detected. With the help of this method, continuity that is flaw detection, dimensions, structural and mechanical properties can be tested. Next method is electric or non-electric entity methods in which exposing the tested object to electric disturbance or non-electric disturbance can be carried out. By using this method, measuring parameters of the composition and structure of a material can be done. Also, finding geometrical dimensions of a tested object and finding moisture level can be done. Next method is ED current entity methods, in which the interaction between an external electromagnetic field and the electromagnetic field induced in the test objects can be observed. With the help of ED current entity methods, testing item dimensions, measuring the diameter of wire, rods and pipes, thickness of metal plates and that of pipe walls can be done. So this is the classification of NDT methods based on physics which is employed here and their applications. Now let's see the difference between destructive testing and non-destructive testing. First of all, destructive testing. These tests are carried out to find properties and behavior of the material under different external conditions. Whereas in NDT, Tests are carried out to find properties and the defects inside the material. In destructive testing, properties of the material such as bending, tensile strength, compression strength can be found out. Whereas in NDT, properties of materials cannot be found out. In destructive testing, defects inside the materials such as flaws, cracks, porosity cannot be located. Whereas in NDT, defects inside the material can be located. In destructive testing, Tests are not possible to carry out on entire batch of the products as it will destroy all parts of the production. In NDT, tests can be carried out on selected samples randomly and results can be correlated to other parts. Destructive testing, the object under testing is destroyed, whereas the objects under testing remains intact in non-destructive testing. In destructive testing, as tests involve destruction of part, the production cost increases as part needs to be replaced after tests. In non-destructive testing, as tests do not involve destruction of parts, the part under test remains intact and production cost can be reduced. The examples of destructive testings are bending test, tensile test, compression test, impact test, etc. Where the examples of non-destructive testings are acoustic emission, ultrasonic testings, ED current testing, radiography testing, etc. So this is the comparison between destructive testing and non-destructive testing. This is all about introduction to destructive and non-destructive testing and its classification. In my next lecture video, I will discuss about NDT test methods in which firstly I will discuss about acoustic emission technique AET. So please don't miss my next lecture video. Thank you. Below this video, in the description, the link of important information related to this video is given. Please go through it. Please like and share this video and subscribe to Dr. Khalkar's Classroom channel to get the notifications about my upcoming videos. Thank you.